So we're here today making trapizzini, a great Roman street food snack invented by Stefano Calligari, who's a pizzaiolo in Rome. It combines Roman pizza al taglio, which is our equivalent of pizza by the slice, and the tramezzino, which is a type of sandwich served in Italy that's made on white bread cut into triangles. Basically, it's an oversized pizza pocket. So as with any baking project that involves making your own dough, this takes a little time. When you're rewarded with focaccia-like bread that you get to split open and fill with toppings of your choice. Really delicious. So this is a high hydration dough, which is pretty typical for pizza al taglio style doughs. We have a kilo of bread flour, 800 grams of water. That translates to an 80% hydration dough. Before we introduce the water though, we're gonna combine our dry ingredients. We have 20 grams of kosher salt, seven grams of instant yeast. This is our preferred yeast for almost all baking and bread projects. Whisk all this together to make sure that everything is well incorporated and you don't have pockets of yeast, pockets of salt along in the flour. Once everything is whisked together, homogenous, we are ready to add the water. So as with other no-knead doughs, just stir it all together until no dry flour remains. I like to have a pastry card on hand to just periodically scrape off dough from the wooden spoon. Otherwise, you tend to end up with one piece of dough that you're kind of constantly stirring around. Our flour's been incorporated and dough looks homogenous, but still lumpy. You're not worried about getting a super smooth dough. At this point, we add in 40 grams of olive oil here. Stirring it around with a spoon will incorporate it somewhat, but you'll find that there are pockets of oil that don't get incorporated. This is when I use my hands to get dirty. Trademark ASMR weird dough sounds that we specialize. As you can see, the dough it's a little bit caked onto the sides of the bowl here, and we want it to proof in a nice clean bowl. So get an, another large clean bowl, lightly oil it with olive oil, and transfer this dough into that bowl. Now we're just gonna wrap this in plastic and set it aside at room temperature for one hour. During this hour that it sits out at room temperature, you're allowing the flour to fully hydrate and you're allowing the yeast to get its first action on the dough. Our dough has had its initial proof for one hour and we're ready to do the folding process. At this point, you wanna form it into a rough rectangle. So you pat it out into an even surface and you're gonna start the folds. We're gonna do three folds and it starts with bringing the far long edge into the center followed by the lower edge. Gently pinch it together as you're working, keep flouring the top of the dough and you'll feel underneath if it's starting to stick, you can flour your board a little more as well. Rotate it 90 degrees and we're gonna repeat that folding process. So bring the top edge to the middle, same with the bottom edge. And as we're folding, we're incorporating air into the dough and we're pushing out some of the carbon dioxide that's built up as the yeast activity gets going during that initial proofing. And now what you're gonna do is cover it with a clean kitchen towel and let it hang out for 15 minutes to relax the gluten that you've developed. So after 15 minutes, we're ready to do our second round of folding. None of this has to be perfect. You just wanna get a uniform piece of dough that you'll then proof overnight in the fridge for pizza making the next day. We have a natural seam on the top here. And once you transfer this to the bowl, you're gonna to wanna to have the seam side down. That looks good. And then wrap your bowl in plastic wrap and you're just gonna pop it in the fridge overnight. Through the magic of television, our dough has proofed in the fridge for 24 hours and it's now sat out for 10 minutes at room temperature and we're ready to turn it out into our sheet tray for its final proof before we bake it off. Start by spraying your sheet tray and make sure to get the sides because you don't want it sticking on the sides when you're trying to get it out. Then olive oil, this seems like a good amount. And then use your hands to sort of spread that oil out, especially onto the side edges. You want to get golden brown color all around and you don't want your dough sticking. Now you just have to turn out the dough onto the sheet tray, like so. You can see the great air bubble action that we got. This is from folding the dough the day before. 
So now you just want to use your hands and spread the dough in the general sort of area of your sheet tray. You want to lift up a little bit and make sure that there's oil still in the center of your sheet tray that it's not all pooled to the sides here. So once you have that, you've got nice oily hands. I'm going to rinse off and then lightly flour the surface of your dough and spread a clean kitchen towel over it. Set it aside to proof for one and a half to two hours at room temperature. The big unveil. You're not going to have to do much stretching to get this to the edges of your sheet tray. As you can see though, that oil does pool up, so you're going to want to finesse it a little bit to make sure that oil gets underneath there and you don't have these little cauldrons of oil that can spill over during baking. So now we're going to pre-portion the dough, divide it in half horizontally, and then you're going to make four rows with your oil. So you're creating eight rectangles. And that guide is for using your bench scraper to make perforations in the dough. We've preheated an oven to 550 Fahrenheit with the rack set as the lower middle, and we have a baking steel on that rack. Pop the sheet tray directly onto the baking steel, and you're gonna set a timer for 16 minutes, but we're gonna rotate the sheet tray halfway through. These look pretty, pretty good. So it's cooled down a little bit, and we have them at a point where we can transfer them out of the sheet tray. But as you can see, we definitely want to get a little more color on the bottom crust and some crispiness. So whenever you're ready, you can pop them on your baking steel or pizza stone to crisp up the bottom, and that should only take two to three minutes or so. So, crisped up the bottoms nicely, looking really good, sounding really good. So we're ready to cut them into triangles. Simply take them and you're just going as if you were cutting a PB&J or something. So for cutting into triangles, a bread knife works best, but then for slitting these open to make pockets, a paring knife works just fine. And you just wanna do like so, create a little pocket. So let's talk toppings. The trappuccino is definitely an Italian thing, so you can keep it Italian, which is kind of what I did here or you can go off and do something completely different. Really, the fillings are up to you. We've got some meatballs, mortadella, prosciutto cotto, some nice stracciatella cheese, marinated artichokes, braised broccoli rabe, parmigiano, anchovies, cherry tomatoes. You can do it pizza party style, where you have people fill up their own, or you, know, you can be the MC of your trapezina party and fill up four people. What I did for this is I Googled how to make some paper hats and used that as a guide for making little trapezino holders. Do some broccoli rub, some shaved parmigiano. And then just time to dig in. It's got a really nice crunch on the outside. It's got nice, airy, pillowy interior. Really good. 